Hi friends, I'm gonna read you another book today. Today we're going to read The Book Tree. Nestled in the branches of a tree, Arlo opened his book and breathed in. <sighs> Beginnings were always the best part. They smelled as if everything were was possible. Bonk! I'm sorry, Mayor. I, lo I got lost in my book and it slipped. Preposterous! Books are dangerous and I don't trust them. They act like seeds which grow into ideas and ideas turn into questions. I will tell you what you need to know. Friends, are books dangerous? No, books help us learn. First, the mayor gathered every book in the library and then every book in the whole town. Then he tore them up until all that was left was a single page that floated away into a passing breeze. Is that how we're supposed to treat books? Do we rip their pages? Arlo chased the page as it blew across the town. It reminded him of a dandelion seed drifting on a wish. When it landed, the muddy earth swallowed it letter by letter until it was gone. Arlo thought that perhaps the mayor was right. After all, he'd been elected mayor. He must know something. But without books, Arlo noticed changes ev wherever he looked. At school, teachers had nothing to read. So story time became nap time. Without cookbooks, restaurants served only dry cereal. And no one went to the theater since actors had nothing to act out. And in the place Arlo loved most, all the shelves were empty. Friends, what is the place called that has lots of books? It's the library. This is Arlo's favorite place, the library, where there's lots and lots of books. Arlo sat where the last page was buried. He missed the crack in the creak of a book's spine. The first time you open it, he longed for the smell and the crisp texture of a book's pages. But most of all, he missed getting lost in an epic adventure. Sadly, Arlo scratched two words into the dirt. Endings were the worst part of any book. Oh, friends, do you see Arlo's crying? But as he stared at the words, they grew into an idea. Arlo sat with pencil and paper and let his idea flow. These are all the things that are part of Arlo's idea. What do you see on this page? He read his story out loud to anyone who passed by and no one stopped to listen. Then Arlo heard something, a sound. He thought he'd never hear again. That familiar creak and crack. What is that sound that he hears? When Arlo looked for the source of the sound, he saw a sprout springing from where the page had been buried. It began to open its leaves. It reached for Arlo's words, begging for more. With every story Arlo wrote and read aloud, the sprout grew. Arlo wrote a story about a giant and the tree grew tall, stretching for the clouds. He wrote about a fire-breathing beast and its branches became as strong as dragon's claws. He wrote about a magical swan made of paper and blooms of tissue paper blossomed into books. When the books were ripe, Arlo climbed into the branches of the book tree and breathed deeply, enjoying the fruits of his harvest. While Arlo read, a friend stopped under the tree. I'm bored, there's nothing to do. You could try reading, Arlo said. Is that a book? Yep, here, I love this story, Arlo said, giving, his hand, giving her a hand up into the tree. The two shared the shady spot. It sounds like Arlo's a pretty kind friend and that he's sharing. 
Soon flocks of readers roosted on the limbs. Books spread through the town like pollen in the wind. People grew hungry for reading again. Some wrote their own stories and became book gardeners themselves. Fiery maples bloomed with picture books. Willows wept with poetry and fruit trees filled with cookbooks flourished. As the trees grew, the town blossomed. The mayor, lost in his mayoral work, was oblivious to all the changes. That is until a ripe book fell on his head. Uh-oh. Bonk. The mayor kicked and stomped. Who planted these trees? You did, sir, Arlo said. When you tore up the books, it planted an idea. Impossible. This is the second time my head is hurting because of a book. The trees have to be cut down. But we've become a town of books and stories. You can't cut them down. The mayor walked the streets of the town. He gorged himself at one of the five-star restaurants, caught a show in the park, and lost himself in a story about a boy fishing for a whale in a puddle. Do you think the mayor's gonna let books stay around this time? Books did all of this, the mayor asked. No, Arlo said as he handed the mayor a freshly picked story. The book was just the seed. The end. So friends, books are super important. That's how we get new ideas and we learn new things. And it's very important to treat our books nicely. All right, friends, thanks for reading with me. I'll see you later, bye.